it means you could always be doing more, and it means you might not be doing enough. It means you could always be doing more, and it means you might not be doing enough. In general, it's because they're putting their energies into the wrong things. In general, it's because they're putting their energies into the wrong things. It's about paying attention to what you're doing and keeping your peripheral vision open. It's about paying attention to what you're doing and keeping your peripheral vision open. Automation is to your time exactly what compounding interest is to your money. Automation is to your time exactly what compounding interest is to your money. It was our job to stand around the beds of his patients and sing Christmas carols. <laughs> It was our job to stand around the beds of his patients and sing Christmas carols. <laughs> Our ancestors eventually got tired of chasing dinner and were finally able to put their roots down by putting some roots down. Our ancestors eventually got tired of chasing dinner and were finally able to put their roots down by putting some roots down. I started planning my adventures and eliminating my physical and psychological baggage. I started planning my adventures and eliminating my physical and psychological baggage. In business, the how matters, of course, but the why matters just as much.
In business, the how matters, of course, but the why matters just as much. The first word that you learned is the one you heard the most. The first word that you learned is the one you heard the most. When economists talk about taxes, they sometimes divide them into direct taxes and indirect taxes. When economists talk about taxes, they sometimes divide them into direct taxes and indirect taxes. Control and coordination of an organism are the results of the units of various organs and chemicals produced in the organism. Proper coordination gives the best response. All living organisms are made up of different types of cells which help them to control and coordinate with their surroundings. Endocrine glands constitute the endocrine system which coordinates and control the body metabolism. Due to the Roman Empire's vast extent and long endurance, the institutions and culture of Rome had a profound and lasting influence on the development of language, religion, architecture and philosophy. Classical and Roman art had a profound impact on the late medieval Italian Renaissance, while Rome's republican institutions influenced the political development.
The basis of such a chemical transformation is the rearrangement of electrons in the chemical bonds between atoms. It can be symbolically depicted through a chemical equation, which usually involves atoms as subjects. The number of atoms on the left and the right in the equation for a chemical transformation is equal. Companies of every size can make use of Facebook's advanced targeting options to make sure the right content is getting to the right people. You don't need a massive budget to be successful on Facebook. With advanced customization options, you can create tailored campaigns, connecting with your potential customers at every stage of their journey. Literature is a group of works of art made up of words. Most are written, but some are passed on by word of mouth. Literature usually means works of poetry and prose that are especially well written. There are many different kinds of literature, such as poetry, plays, or novels. In the Good Universities Guide 2019 released on September 24, USQ once again led the way in graduate employment rates and median starting salary. It revealed USQ graduates had the highest median salary in Australia at $63,800 and found that 80.5% of graduates found full-time employment within four months of finishing their course, more than any other university in Australia.
The image represents pie chart of European Parliament elections in 2004, among PESAUL, EEP, and others. In this chart is evident that EPP takes the biggest number of seats in the Parliament, and it is 38%. Minimum number of seats in European Parliament is taken by EAD, and it takes 2%. Other big contributor is PES with 27%, which together with EPP, takes more than 50%. In comparison, some smaller contributors are ELDR with 9%, and UEN with 4%. In conclusion, there are a lot contributors in European Parliament, and they are not equally dispersed. The image represents bar graph of people growth since 1965 up until 1995, in different regions. In this chart it is evident that the biggest growth happened in Africa, which goes up to 180%, and lowest in Europe, which goes under 1%. If we take a look at Asia for example, we can see that since 1965 rate was around 105%, and it dropped to 60% in 1975. In comparison, some more developed regions such as North America and Europe, have slower population growth than less developed regions, such as Latin America and Africa. In conclusion, growth rates in world are evidently getting lower throughout the years. The image represents densely built area with more than 10 high-rise buildings. We can see that modern world and technology has advanced so much that we can build such buildings. It is evident that there is always a need for more and more space for people. In comparison to earlier cities when we could build one-story houses and have been more in touch with our neighbors and greenery, these buildings create unnatural environment for people to live in. In conclusion this image shows us where our world is heading for in the next years, and we need to ask ourselves a question is this is what we want our cities to look like.
The image represents structural diagram of a single peach. When the fruit is cut in two we can see there are two parts. Seed and pericarp. Seed has around 50% smaller radius in comparison to pericarp. Seed consists of endosperm, embryo and seed coat, and pericarp consists of endocarp, mesocarp and exocarp. It is evident that mesocarp is bright yellow in color, and exocarp is orange and yellow. We may notice that seed is protected and nurtured by three layers of pericarp. In conclusion, this is an interesting diagram that allows us to understand structure of a peach. This image graph compares height of five high-rise buildings, including the Shard and Torrey de Crystal. The tallest building among the presented ones is the Shard with just above 300 meters in height, and the shortest is Torrey de Crystal, with just under 250 meters. From this image it is evident that none of the buildings is lower than 200 meters. Khmer's Bank Tower with the peak is 300 meter tall, and Mesoderm is just about 250 meters. Skyscrapers presented here are among the tallest buildings in the world. In conclusion, this is an interesting graph to observe. This line graph represents black non-Hispanic math and stat majors by gender between 1990 and 2008. We can see that until 2006 women were in majority. The biggest number of women and men with math and stat major happened in 1996 and was around 560 women and 510 men. Lowest number of women with those subject was in 1990 just around 360, in comparison to the lowest number of men that happened in 2004, when number was around 340. In conclusion, we can see that numbers of men and women fluctuate throughout years. According to the Learning Disabilities Association of America Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is not considered a learning disability. But the reality is that many students who have ADHD have other associated issues which do hinder their ability to learn according to the traditional education plan that exists in most public schools. Even without additional learning disabilities students with ADHD and their teachers often need adaptive strategies to make learning less difficult. One of the issues that teachers, and this includes homeschooling parents' teachers, have to deal with in students with ADHD is distractibility. Students with ADHD find it difficult to concentrate on any one subject for extended periods of time. 
One way parents' teachers can deal with this is to keep lessons short. Help the student to break down larger tasks into a series of smaller tasks. Math is one of those large tasks that lends itself to being divided into more manageable pieces. Instead of instructing the student to do their math, it would benefit both the teacher and the student to have a short-term goal of completing the instructional portion of the math assignment, then taking a break. After a short break allow the student to refocus and complete a small number of math problems. The speaker was discussing ADHD disorder, which is not actually considered learning disability. She has mentioned that students with ADHD have other problems that affect their studying abilities in a traditional way, and therefore they need active strategies to resolve them. Problem is not only for kids yet for the teachers who have to deal with their distractibility. As well, she has noted that solution for this problem would be to keep lessons short and break them into smaller units. One of the examples on how to deal with this problem is setting short-term goals. In conclusion, this lecture was intriguing and helps people see ADHD disorder in different light. Think castles, temples, the Parthenon, the Colosseum, and even the pyramids of Egypt. What do these structures have in common? Yes, all these are made of stone. This is why stone is dubbed as one of the oldest construction material used by mankind. In ancient times, stone houses are built for a stronger fortress against natural calamities and from human invaders. In fact, the Nap of Hoar is one of the oldest houses made of stone to exist since 3700 BC. Stone is incredibly durable, and the fact that these ancient structures are still standing today are proof of that. Currently, stone houses still remain one of the most viable options for sustainable living. Many homeowners are considering building a stone house as compared to other home construction materials. If you're considering to build one, here are some advantages you can weigh in. Sustainability. Stone is a natural construction material, it does not require any other resource to make it. This alone makes it very environment friendly. It does not also require any use of chemicals to forge because it can be sourced almost anywhere. Durable. Stone is resistant to water, fire, wind, and other natural factors that typically affect a house. It does not mold, and it is not prone to termites or majority of pests that attack a structure. The lecturer was discussing stone as a material and the benefits of its use. Stone is the oldest material that mankind used to build strong fortresses, castles and amazing buildings, such as pyramids of Egypt, Parthenon and Colosseum. One of the first known buildings from 3700 BC was made out of stone. 
The speaker further mentioned good qualities and advantages of stone, such as sustainability and durability. Stone is so durable that wind and sun have very small effect, and it does not get moldy nor infested with pests. In conclusion, this lecture gives us a great insight into benefits of stone as a material. The purpose of this article is to put forward some ideas to help with the teaching of addition, combining groups of physical objects. For many students, this is their most basic experience of adding up. This process normally involves collecting two sets of objects, then counting how many objects there are in total. For example, by building two towers of cubes, and then counting up every single block. For many, this method can be too involved, particularly for those students who present attention deficit disorder. If the child cannot hold their attention for the whole of the activity, blocks will be put awry, towers will end up with additional blocks, blocks will get mixed up, and at the end, the wrong answer is arrived at. The length of the process means that if your child does not master the concept quickly, they are not likely to make progress at all. In addition, it is difficult to extend this process into a calculation that can be approached mentally. For example, try to imagine two large sets of objects in your head, and then count them all up. Even for adults, this is nearly impossible. The speaker was discussing ways to help learning addition in school. Physical addition is the most common way of teaching kids math, usually using two sets of objects and mixing them together. The speaker mentioned that this might be a problem for children with ADHD, which would lead to more problems as child would not progress fast enough. Another problem that speaker sees in physical addition is that it does not directly transfers to mental ability, so children have problems when they are not physically seeing objects. After all, even adults would have problems trying to use the same techniques. In conclusion, this lecture gives an interesting point of view onto the problematics of learning and understanding process of addition. Which parts of the body are used to hear sounds? Ears. Name the system of government where people vote for people. Democracy. How many languages does bilingual speak? Two. 
What white liquid from cows is often added to tea or coffee? Milk. How we call a picture that doctor takes to see inside of the body. X-ray. What instrument used to examine very small things? Microscope Language is usually expressed in two forms, spoken and what. written What is the destructive program that spreads from computer to computer Virus Piece of paper given after you bought an item? A receipt. In which organ of the body thinking occurs? The brain. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.